Welcome back. We are here looking at the uh, indices, and this is going to be my weekly forecast for Monday, May 2nd, 2022. If you like support our channel, you will hit the subscribe button down here in the corner, hit the like button, the bell button to see our newest videos, and let's get to it. So we'll start by looking at the NASDAQ. And as you can see, we did rally up towards uh, the 15 moving average, and then we have absolutely crashed the last month. Or basically, April was uh, horrible uh, for the Nasdaq and tech stocks in general. They have been falling off a cliff. We have also broken below the lows of February and also in March. And at this current stage, uh, we ended up uh, Friday basically selling into the end of the session, which is not a very uh, bullish shine, to be fair to honest. But there are things that are also why, whether or not this will continue or not. Uh, probably not. We'll probably see this also rally in between and continuing uh, going uh, lower. But the reason why I say that is because uh, the RSI is significantly low at this point. We are almost at our sold conditions. And historically, when the, when the, um, the weekly chart gets into our sold condition, it basically bounced. We can see it right here. We saw it right here and so on and so on. It We have there are many, many examples of basically the RSI in the weekly chart getting to oversold conditions and then we technically rally. But we can also look this look at this as a bearish flag pattern. And in that case, uh, if this holds this bearish flag pattern, then we're looking at a drop all the way down towards roughly the, fifth, uh, the 200 moving average down here at the 10.6K. So in the long term, in the next uh, in a few months, if this basically holds, then we'll probably see this drop all the way down to the 200 moving average. And historically, that's also where we have bounced um, in the past. We saw this breakdown in 2020 and then bounced. We saw this in 2018 and then we bounced basically 2018, 2020. And we can go way back in history and see this every time we get very close to the 200 moving average, we technically bounce from that. But this has been a historical uh, rally and uh, this was basically always going to happen. Uh, the question is just how far. And my best guess at this point, if this uh, bearish flag pattern holds it, then we'll drop uh, towards the 200 moving average before continuing higher. Breaking below here or having a crossing of the 15 or 200, then we're looking at, well, dot com bubble um, territory, but we're definitely not there yet. The Fed will definitely step in uh, before that basically happens. But in the, the in the weekly chart, MACD is still bearish, stochastic is bearish, and the RSI is also bearish and approaching oversold conditions. So looking at the, the S&P 500, also here we are basically testing the lows of February and also March, and Mar April was basically horrible also for the S&P 500. There is still more uh, room to the downside in the S&P compared to the Nasdaq. We are at the 37 in the in the RSI, so we may see this continue, but we still haven't broken below uh, the lows of February and also March, but. At this current stage, everything points to lower levels. Our MACD is bearish, the casting is bearish, and so is the RSI. And also here, we can basically make out a bearish flag pattern, and that basically also means that we may see this drop all the way down towards the 200 moving average going forward. If we were to rally, then the 50 moving average, that should be where we'll find massive resistance. And breaking above here, we need to break above this candlestick in order to go back to the all-time highs. There's not, nothing really that points to the market turning around. Um, world economy is slowing down. Uh, monetary policy is uh, not favorable to the stock market at the moment. And inflation is basically rampant everywhere. So uh, yes, the market is expected to continue falling. There will be occasional rallies, but in general, the market is expected to fall and is also expected to go into um, uh, into a recession. So let's look at the Dow Jones. Also here, Dow Jones got absolutely crushed um, when it rallied above the 50 moving average, and that's a massive warning sign for the Dow Jones. It has not been as bearish as uh, Nasdaq, uh, or the S&P 500. We haven't closed below uh, the February's lows or the March lows, but still 
that this rejection here at the 50 moving average is a massive warning sign that we may see this continue lower. Also here, we can make out a bearish flag pattern and that if with this, um, if this holds and then we'll see this drop all the way down towards the, the 200 moving average before uh, continuing higher. So long term, pattern is very bearish however if we manage to break a rally from here then the 50 moving average will most likely come into play yet again and breaking above that then we may go back to the very highs looking at technical indicators we can see the macd is bearish stochastic is bearish and the rsi is bearish as well and still a lot of room to the downside before this becomes oversold so let's look at the european market and here it looks uh, horrible uh, to be very honest it has tried to rally several times. We saw it here, massive shooting star, yet again here, massive shooting star. And we tried to rally also uh, last week, but basically pulled back quite significantly. It doesn't really show up in here, but if you look at the daily chart and so on, yes, it did pull back quite significantly at the end of the, of the session. So this looks like it is going to continue having problems as the European economy is basically slowing down and there's a lot of room to the downside in the DAX so going towards back towards the 200 moving average that is quite plausible whether or not we break all the way down to the very lows of February that's a different thing and this was mainly a reaction of the war in Ukraine and therefore became significantly oversold. So we may pull back towards the 200 moving average and bounce from there. That is possible. And if we do bounce, then the 20 simple moving average here should offer um, resistance. The 50 moving average here should also offer resistance. So there are two major barriers that we have to go through. And then we have 14,000 uh, or 15,000 give or take, which is the basically ultimate barrier here that we have to break above. Break above, uh, below the 200 moving average, and then we're looking at these lows, which is 11,500. And then we are looking basically at the very lows here um, of, the, of the coronavirus, but we are very far off. That's probably months into the future. If this market really turns to the downside, if, uh, uh, Russia, for example, turns off uh, energy uh, supply to Europe, and then this market will basically get crushed. MACD is uh, flat at this point, stochastic is flat, and the RSI is fairly bearish at this stage as well. So let's, let's look at the VIX in the, the weekly chart. We can see there is a little bit of room to the upside. Uh, we closed at the top of the end of the session on Friday, and that's a, a very bullish shine. And in general, that basically means that we may see this um, these indices continue falling at least in the beginning of uh, of uh, next week. And after that, we when the RSI when the VIX sorry starts pulling back towards uh, support, which is the 50 and the 200 moving average, that's where we'll see these indices start rallying again. So overall, it looks like the VIX is building up for higher volatility in the future and that will make sense as uh, uncertainty is growing whether or not that we are going to have a recession whether or not inflation is going to continue whether or not um, monetary policy is going to be as aggressive as as expected and so on if we look at the, the indicators we can see the macd it is crossing the signal line becoming bullish we can see the stochastic is bullish and we also see the RSI is bullish and there's a lot of room to the upside in the RSI before this becomes overbought. It did get significantly overbought here when we had the uh, basically the top of uh, volatility concerning the war in, in Ukraine. But since then it has fallen towards uh, support and now it starts rallying yet again. So we need to break above uh, 36.81 in order to go significantly higher. So let's look at the 10 year. It has gone completely parabolical. It is significantly overbought. So, uh, so what we're kind of looking at is when this becomes something look similar to this, where we get a shooting star uh, just hanging there. And that's kind of the sign that this will pull back significantly, most likely towards um, the previous highs over here, which is a 1.9. 
or the 20 simple moving average which is moving in this direction so in the daily chart it has been bouncing off the 20 simple moving average we're also going to have a crossing here of the 200 and the 50 moving average so a death cross there and this is a bullish shine for this market so when this crosses is basically a, a signal that in the long term this market is going to continue increasing but it is gone completely parabolic and uh, what I'm kind of looking at is uh, um, it's a candlestick that is basically exhausted and that's a sign that this will basically pull back but pulling backs are basically um, the buying opportunities here as we are going to have this crossing of the 50 and the 200 moving average. MACD is bullish, Stochastic is bullish and the RSI is bullish as well but it is significantly overbought at this point and therefore um therefore a pullback is expected um in the very near future so we're also approaching an area which has been significant resistant in the past and therefore i think we will see a similar candlestick sometime this week where we we'll get a rally and then just massive pullback and signal that will uh, we'll pull back towards major support. So, hope you found this helpful. You want to support the channel by subscribing, hit the like button, the bell button to see our new videos, and good luck. And thank you very much.